Hello friends, uh, so till now we have discussed about nucleation and growth uh, during phase transformation and uh, we also discussed now that uh, how we can find out the time required for transformation. Okay. So, we used two ways to do that, one is through TTT curve and another through CCT curves. Now, we will go to the actual heat treatments uh, which, uh, which are used in industry. Okay. So, we will try, try to understand different types of heat treatment which are, uh, so you should know the name and uh, what temperatures they do those, temp uh, those heat treatment at. Okay. So, this, this is more like just in lot of information, technological information important for uh, engineering uh, engineer practicing engineer okay so today's lecture will be on heat treatment this is a overall uh, one snapshot of heat treatment okay i took it from uh, uh, this particular ebook a very good book uh, you can also refer this ebook uh, from from anand subramanyam in iit kanpur Okay, so, heat treatment can be divided into bulk heat treatment or surface heat treatments. In bulk heat treatment, you can have anything normalizing, hardening and tempering, mar tempering, os tempering, all these heat treatment we will see. In annealing also, it can be full annealing, recrystallization, annealing, stress relieving, annealing or spherodization, annealing. Okay. And uh, for sur surface treatment, you can have thermal surface treatment or thermochemical. In thermal, okay, it is only the flame, through flame you do uh, take flame and do uh, treatment okay. and uh, because as you can see now from uh, after understanding, understanding the TTT and CCT curves, suppose I heat the surface by, uh, by any means which is able to heat only the surface let us say, maybe up to 1 mm or 2 mm depth. Okay, suppose you have uh, induction heating or laser heating or electron beam heating where they have very concentrated source and the heating will be very localized and then you stop the heating. What will happen? The whole bulk of the material is still not heated up. It is still maybe at room temperature or let us say slightly higher temperature. Okay. But the surface is uh, went into let us say in the austenite phase by heating. So, now the surface get so much uh, material which is not heated up okay, and so it will cool very rapidly. So, you can have localized uh, transformation okay, where you can get a different type of phase let us say martensite phase okay, and martensite phase is a very hard phase, okay, it has a very high hardness. Okay. So, by doing this the type of thermal treatment I can have a very hard surface. Okay, and still my bulk of the material is soft. Thermochemical if you see, okay, already we have discussed about diffusion. So, you can have carburizing where carbon can you can diffuse and you can understand that by changing the chemistry, I can change lot of things. I can change the microstructure locally, okay, I will have more of perlite. So, maybe uh, better properties, better, better mechanical properties on the surface. You can do nitriding similar to carburizing where now nitrogen is uh, diffused in, inside the surface or you can have carbon nitriding. Okay. So, there is a plethora of heat treatment processes. Okay. Right now, we are concentrating on the bulk heat treatment. Before going further, let us see that what are the temperatures which are important in the uh, iron carbon phase diagram okay? and we are only concentrating in mostly the part where the steel is going to be there okay? and also only in the part where you have, have we are, you are going to have a solid state phase transformation. So, you have austenite here, okay? Okay, I have austenite here. Okay, and you have alpha ferrite here okay, and on the other side you will be having cementite okay, and th this is where you will have eutectoid reaction. So, there are two, two three temperature critical temperature shown here. Okay, one is this A3 line okay, where my alpha plus gamma transform to gamma. You have ACM line where your uh, gamma plus Ap3C transform to gamma 
okay, and you have A1 line which is related to eutectoid temperature. So, there are couple of important uh, critical temperatures here okay, and you can see as the composition of my alloy is going to change the temperature, this AT temperature is going to change that is obvious. So, these are critical temperature, A1 is the isotherm at eutectoid temperature. Okay. A3 is your phase boundary between the austenite and two phase austenite plus ferrite. ACM is the phase boundary between austenite and two phase austenite plus cementite. Okay. So, basically uh, on this we have now also plotted that at what temperatures you are going to do a particular uh, operation. For example, where you are going to do annealing, where you are going to do normalizing. Okay. If I want to do normalizing, I will have to go to a temperature above A3, similarly for annealing. Okay, this is for uh, hyper eutectoid steel, normalizing will be above ACM, but annealing will be above A1 temperature. Then spherodization where you are going to do recrystallization annealing or stress relieving where you are going to do. Okay, all those uh, temperatures are marked here. So, now what are the, these, these are the holding temperatures for different uh, 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 heat treatments. And what will be the cooling rate for different heat treatments? Okay, you can see that I can have furnace cooling, so very slow cooling rate. Okay, this this will give you furnace cooling. Okay, which is what we do in annealing. This is a faster cooling rate. That means I have taken the product out of the furnace and I am doing air cooling. So furnace cooling means I take the furnace to that temperature keep it at that temperature for some time so that my whole product is, uh, is homogeneously heated to that temperature and then I switch off the furnace. Okay. So, now furnace is going to cool, my product is going to cool, so it is a very slow cooling process okay. and that is what we will have in furnace cooling okay. and that is what we follow in annealing process. Then we, I can take the product out from the furnace, so in air it will get cool, so through convection uh, currents and then of course it will be higher cooling rate than furnace cooling okay, and that is what we do in normalizing. You can do oil quenching, you take it out, put it in the oil, okay. of course now uh, oil quenching will be much faster than air cooling. Okay. So, you can have a faster cooling and uh, these all cooling curves are superimposed on a CCT curve as shown here, you can see that. So, now you can also understand that if you are doing furnace cooling what microstructure you will get, if you are doing fur air cooling what microstructure I am going to get, if I am doing oil quenching what microstructure I am going to get and if I am doing a water quenching which type of microstructure I am going to get. For example, if you take oil quenching here my cooling curve has crossed the perlite start temperature, okay, but it has not crossed the perlite end temperature eh, or end curve. Okay. So, the transformation is not completed here and now it is crossing the MS temperature. So, what it will happen in this case that some austenite will transform into perlite. Okay. And the remaining austenite will transform into martensite. Okay, so it will not be a complete transformation into one phase. Some uh, portion will be martensitically transformed. Some portion will be transformed into uh, perlite and uh, like like that. For air cooling and furnace cooling, you can see that it has crossed the start temperature and end temperature. So in this case, the transformation is complete here, whereas in this case, it is not. Or I can do water quenching also, in that case I will be skipping this nose, this this, so there is no diffusional transformation and the cooling is fast enough to cross, to directly go to the martensitic uh, temperature where martensite uh, start is there. So now in this case I will get the martensite directly. Okay. So now we will come to uh, individually one by one uh, uh, and uh, try to discuss each uh, heat treatment. So first one is annealing, either you can say full annealing or you can just say annealing. What is the treatment procedure? Heating temperature is above about 50 degree Celsius above A3 temperature. So A3 temperature is there, so you just go 50 degree Celsius above that okay, and there you hold it. So, if you want to have uh, 
For hypoeutectoid still it is 50 degree Celsius above A3 and for hyperutectoid it is 50 degree Celsius above A1 temperature. So, in this case we are not crossing the ACM temperature ok. And then cooling will be done by furnace cooling. What is the expected microstructure and properties? You will get coarse microstructure ok because I am doing very slow cooling here. And of course, because I am getting coarse microstructure, uh, this you, you will understand when we will discuss mechanical properties that it will have, it is going to be have a, going to have low strength and it will have higher ductility. Note is there for hyperutectoid steel, the heating is done below ACM temperature. This is done to avoid formation of continuous network of pro eutectoid cement right on prior austenite grain boundaries. If you remember, when we were say showing you pro eutectoid ferrite, okay, uh, they were uh, the pro eutectoid ferrite was forming on the grain boundaries, the austenite grain boundaries, okay, and because of that, it has it was getting a continuous network of cementite. Now, please understand that cementite is a hard phase and a brittle phase. So, if any crack in nucleates, it is easy to go along this uh, boundary okay, and your material will fail without any, uh, any warning actually. So, this presence of network of cementite pro provide easy path for crack propagation. So, now we have not discussed about this all the crack propagation and what do we mean by that. But right now you take it from us that uh, from me that uh, this type of microstructure is not good for mechanical properties. Okay, so I do not want a continuous network of cementite forming that is why I for any link I am going to do at a temperature A1 uh, uh, at a temperature above A1 not A scheme. Okay. Normalizing Heating temperature above A3 as we discussed for hypoeutectoid and above ACM for hyperutectoid. So, in this case I am going above A1. Okay. Why I, I will be able to do that? Because I am doing a air cooling. Okay. So, in this case your uh, chances of getting those continuous network of cementite is not uh, there. Expected microstructure properties, fine microstructure compared to annealed one okay, because we are doing faster cooling more strength because of that and lower ductility than any steel. In hyperutectoid steel normalizing done above ACM due to faster cooling cementite does not form a continuous film along the grain boundaries. Okay. So, here I can do go above ACM. Then uh, when you have this cementite in this uh, network form or when you have cementite in perlite also when you have cementite in this elongated uh, lamellar form, okay, uh, this is not a very uh, good uh, microstructure. Okay. So, for that uh, to take care of this uh, long cementite uh, layers, okay, what we do is what, what we call as spheroidization annealing. That means, I want to make uh, cementite instead of this long, long uh, lamellas, I want to make it as uh, spherical cementite okay, and that is why it, why it is called spheroidization. So, heating temperature again what will be the heating temperature? It will be below A 1 okay, to transform lamellar cementite into globular cementite. So, you have will have globules of uh, cementite cooling not specific as no phase transformation is occurring. Okay. In this case cooling is not important because we are not crossing the austenite boundary here. Okay. If you remember, I will just show you very quickly. This was the spheroidization temperature, I, we did not cross the A 1 temperature. So, there is no phase transformation which has started. So, cooling rates are important only when you are having any phase transformation. Okay. In this case, because we have not crossed the austenite, we are just doing uh, 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 annealing at a temperature below A1. Uh, so, cooling is not very important here. Okay. So, in this case, uh, no specific cooling rate, you can have faster, you can have slower. Okay. Of course, if your product is big, I cannot have fast cooling otherwise there will be thermal stresses in the material. So, cooling can be decided depending upon the size of the product. What are the expected microstructure? You will have globular cementite that is why we are doing this uh, annealing. 
in ferrite matrix expected to increase both strength and ductility. So, you will instead of those long cementite okay, you will get a spherical cementite like this. Why you get this spherical shapes? Long time heating leads cementite plates to form cementite spheroids. The driving force is the reduction in interfacial energy. Okay. So, for the same volume of let us say per uh, cementite, if I have this kind of uh, elongated uh, morphology, you will see that the surface area is maximum is going to be large here. And for a for a given volume, the smallest surface area is always going to be there for a spherical shape. This already we know from geometry that for any given volume, if you have a spherical shape, that is going to be have the minimum surface area. Okay, that is why we do this spheroidization. You can have another operation called stress relief annealing. Okay, again, some of these ideas are uh, you will be able to understand more clearly when we will go to mechanical properties. When you do any deformation, plastic deformation, you introduce stresses in the material. Okay, and in some cases, these stresses are not good for uh, service application. Okay, so we have to do a relieving of stress relieving operation. Okay, and to do that. So, to relieve stresses developed during cold working, okay, during any forming or uh, any let us say rolling operation or extrusion operation. So, you any cold working machining or welding processes, okay, you whatever stresses you are going to develop, okay, that can be relieved by doing a stress relief annealing. So, it is done below recrystallization temperature at, at around 550 degrees Celsius for plain carbon steel. Recovery is the dominant mechanism during this process. So, this recovery also we will see when we will discuss uh, mechanical properties. Cooling again not specific because we are not doing any uh, uh, phase transformation, although it should be slow enough not to introduce any thermal stresses. As you can see in welding also the stresses are developed because you have thermal stresses, you go to very high temperature where the welding is taking place. Okay, so, you develop thermal stresses in the material. So, when we are cooling it, we should not introduce again the same thermal stresses. There will not be any significant change in microstructure, stresses will be relieved and properties will be restored as observed before a particular operation. So, whatever uh, properties were there before any of this operation cold working, machining or welding that will be restored by doing this stress relieving. Okay. Then there is another process called recrystallization. Again, you will be able to understand more clearly when we go to mechanical properties. Okay. So, after cold working to restore strain hardening capacity of the material and to get fine grain microstructure, this recrystallization uh, uh, treatment is given. Heating temperature is below A1, okay, um, around 625 to 675 degrees Celsius for plain carbon steel. Expected microstructure, fine recrystallized microstructure, good strength and ductility because of grain refinement. So, all these things we will see when we will discuss mechanical properties that what why we get very good ductility when we uh, good strength when we have grain refinement. This particular term also you will understand when we will discuss the mechanical property, strain hardening capacity of the material and to get fine grain microstructure. Okay. This is another uh, type of heat treatment given to uh, materials. Then there is another uh, heat treatment procedure called hardening okay. and this is to impart high hardness to, to steel by producing martensite in steel. So, martensite is a very hard phase, okay, very hard, very high strength, very hard. Okay. So, if I want to have hardness or in the material, I will do a heat treatment, give you a heat treatment called hardening. So, this is a microstructure of a cement of a martensite. Okay, you can see all these martensite plates are there. Okay, these martensite plates are there in zigzag uh, arrangement. So, heating temperature is about 50 degree Celsius above A3 for hypoeutectoid and 50 degree Celsius above A1 for hyperutectoid. Cooling is water quenching or cooling rate high enough to miss the nose of the CCD curve. 
okay so coding has to be high enough so that i don't have uh, cross the C, the nose of the ccd curve when you do water quenching if your product is big you can understand that there will be lot of thermal stresses in the material okay so it is always advisable to add alloying elements if you want to do hardening so that the nose of the curve shifts toward the right and you get enough time to uh, or you can have a slower cooling rate also to get martensite okay basically uh, this was not uh, explicitly told to you uh, when we were discussing ttt curve okay so let me just uh, explain this idea to you that suppose this is your let's say we are discussing ttt curve here okay and this is my martin side start temperature so usually for plain carbon steel this knows the time which is required to miss the nose is around in, it is in few seconds basically so i have to have very high cooling rate so that i miss this nose okay now when you have very high cooling rate you are going to bound to introduce lot of thermal stresses okay now you, this also we have understood now that all this kinetics is because of diffusion process austenite transform into perlite austenite transform into ferrite and so on okay so if by any means i can reduce the diffusion process okay or if i can uh, make the diffusion slow uh, 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 slow process i can shift the nose towards the right okay so by adding alloying element okay let me plot a new tt curve in a different uh, uh, color suppose i add alloying element so now when you have transformation from austenite to any other phase there has to be redistribution of this alloying element uh, in allo in uh, austenite they may have different solubility in ferrite they may have different solubility so they have to this alloying element also have to redistribute between austenite and ferrite okay so what will what will happen because of that when i add alloying element my this curve shifts towards the right so it will go somewhere like this okay so now i am going to give enough time for having a martensitic transformation so now i can have much slower cooling and still i will be able to get martensite because i am able to skip the nose by doing that i am reducing the thermal stresses okay so that is the idea of uh, adding alloying elements in steel if you have plain carbon steel you have to have only water quenching to get uh, martensite okay so that is what we are saying water quenching or cooling rate high enough to miss nose of the ccd curve i can shift the nose of the ccd curve by adding alloying elements okay and uh, uh, let's say then i can do a martensitic transformation by oil quenching also which is a much uh, less severe process okay now since uh, martensite is a very hard uh, uh, and brittle phase okay we have not uh, come across this term still now okay but uh, take it from me that martensite is a very hard and brittle phase okay so what happens is that uh, when if you have a martensitic uh, steel okay uh, in a plain carbon steel suppose you have martensitic phase you cannot use it in the uh, any any application because uh, if you have any small impact also uh, it will fracture so to impart any ductility to steel after hardening okay what we do is we do a heating uh, uh, at around 400 to 500 degree celsius so that carbon precipitate out so when you go, as i told you if you remember martensite is a metastable phase okay so if i take it to a little bit again higher temperature what will happen is it will dissociate in, into two stable phases which is ferrite and cementite so if i do a little bit heating what will happen the carbon which is trapped in the martensite during diffusion less transformation okay that will be able to come out in form of cementite okay so that is what is uh, we are saying here 
The expected microstructures, microstructure is martensite with precipitates of carbon, improves ductility however at the cost of strength. The strength of this martensite, the tempered martensite will be lower than the uh, hardened martensite, okay. and, uh, but it will have better ductility. Some notes are there, a sample with martensitic microstructure is hard but brittle. During tempering, martensite decomposes to ferrite and cementite on heating, uh, okay, uh, decomposes to ferrite and cementite uh, okay, on heating. Tool steel has a, a, has a, a, a quench ha hardness of around 65, so this we will see what do we mean by these hardness values, which is tempered to get a hardness of around RC 45 or 55. Okay. Tool steels are the steels where you do uh, some alloying in the steel okay. and these can be easily hardened by oil quenching okay. and that is what you use in industry for making dyes and so on. Then there are couple of uh, very interesting processes, uh, one is for example, mar tempering, it is to reduce the thermal stresses in hardened steel. So, you can have water quenching also. Okay, but to reduce thermal stresses, we can do a little bit, uh, we can be smart enough here, a trick, we can use a trick here and uh, that is what we do in mar tempering that to reduce the thermal stresses, I use a process called mar tempering, I will show what do we mean by that. So, heating temperature is about 50 degrees Celsius above A3 for hyperutectoid and 50 degrees Celsius above A1 for hyperutectoid. Cooling is, is stops just before the MS temperature. Okay, so you can have very high cooling rate, but you stop at a certain temperature above MS temperature for achieving uniform temperature throughout the sample, and then it is quenched. Expected microstructure properties: martensite with lower stresses will be formed. Okay, sometimes when you do this kind of very fast cooling, what happens is martensite itself is hard and brittle. And at the top of that, you also have these thermal stresses, which which can uh, introduce some cracks in the material, even before any stresses are applied. Okay, so that we don't want. So we can uh, reduce the thermal stresses by doing a mar tempering operation. There is another very interesting pro, uh, uh, heat treatment called os tempering. Okay, what we do in this is to get get benign by isothermal transformation. Now, if you remember, I said that you cannot get benign, okay, in uh, normal uh, coolings. Uh, in uh, in in the, if you are doing continuous cooling, so benign can be, of course, can be you can get by isothermal transformation. So heating temperature is again same as we did in uh, mar tempering, cooling more than critical cooling, and then isothermal transformation in benign region expected microstructure, benign, good strength and ductility. So, this is what these two uh, treatments are called. So, mar tempering you do very fast quenching, okay, just avoiding the nose where the diffusional transformation can take place okay. and then we are holding just above the martensitic start temperature to have equalized uh, temperature throughout the sample. So, this will uh, the, by this we are trying to reduce the thermal stresses in the material. Okay, we are giving enough time for temperature to stabilize and have uh, uniform temperature throughout the product and then you are doing the quenching okay, to get the uh, martensite. Similarly, I can do for os tempering that I skip the nose, have cooling up to this point and then I am holding uh, isothermal holding to get benign. So, this is what we call as os tempering. Okay. And uh, you can see that just skipping the nose, okay. so there I can define a cooling rate which is just skipping the nose as critical cooling rate. So, if any, uh, any cooling rate which is more than this is bound to skip the nose here. So, this is a cooling rate which is critical cooling rate which is just missing the nose. So, when you have a certain TTT diagram, okay, if I say the cooling rate should be more than the critical cooling rate, that means it is more than a, a cooling rate which is just skipping the nose. Okay. 
just to be safe that there should not be any diffusional transformation during the cooling. Okay, so, this is mar tempering is a very smart uh, process you can see that I am holding it to avoid the thermal distresses. Okay. So, these are the different heat treatments uh, there are in, in fact even more heat treatments uh, possible uh, with uh, materials okay. one has to be smart enough to devise those heat treatment. Okay, and uh, this basic ideas only give you uh, uh, new ways to de devise these new heat treatments. Okay, and uh, it will not be an end of heat treatment uh, uh, research. People will keep coming with new heat treatment depending upon their understanding of the microstructure, the kinetics, the thermodynamics and so on. Okay. So, with that thank you.